Hello everybody, I'm George Riles from Archery Learning Center in Snellville, Georgia. I'm here for Last Chance Archery and guess what I have? Brand new Vane Master Pro. I'm going to show you how to put this thing together and fletch an arrow with it. Here we go. So it comes with a nice carrying case so you can pack it up, put it in your bow case, take it with you because if you're like me, you fletch arrows the night of the tournament. That's how I get my good luck. So uh, here it is, all packaged up. We've got some really nice instructions here. You read through those, okay? And uh, Alan Ranch there to work on it. Let's see, we've got the plate. And this plate is now machined out of aluminum. It feels great, it's got a nice, uh, it's more compact, and it has a nice uh, feel to it. So that goes like so. This is the knock receiver. The knock of the arrow will go right on there like that once the thing is assembled. So that goes here, like so. And then I'll flip this over and put the screw in the hole there. Simple as that. Okay. And I can set the extension here and I'll explain that a little bit later. Right now I'm just gonna set this on zero. The jig has numbers so if you ever do uh, a dozen arrows, you can write down all the numbers that you fletch the arrows at. So if you do another dozen, you can make a match very easily. We have the fletching clamp, and the clamp goes right here, just like that. So now we're ready. I'm going to show you how to fletch an arrow. All right, so the first thing that we'll do is I'm going to take my arrow here. And the, when you put the arrow in, you know, I'm using a little short one here, but when you put the arrow in, you're going to put the arrow in and just kind of turn that into place there and slide that until it's on and make sure that your clamp is in a, a clicked spot. And then this part here goes on the end of the shaft and then you'll pull that tight so that there's a little pressure holding that in so that this won't slip off while you're in the process of fletching. All right, I've got the arrow in the jig, so now I'm gonna set up my clamp. Now for my indoor arrows, I use a three helical, and I use a left helical because left helical clears the blade of my rest, and you'll find as a right-handed shooter, left helical clears better than right helical. So I'll take the pin, I'll put it in the number three L for left and put the clamp against it, just like so. And then I'll tighten that down, just like that. And this is set and ready to go. Now I'll dry fit the vein. So you can get yourself some Gas Pro Hornet Power Veins. There we go, so a little shout out for Gas Pro. But you'll line your back of your vein up on these marks here. I use the black mark there and then I'll just slide the vein in place, like so. And I'm not gonna put glue on this right away. I'm gonna take this and just dry fit this to the shaft to just make sure that everything is right. And this is an important step. So I'm gonna slide this in, and then I can turn these discs so that the discs match up with the shaft. So you see the wires are what cause the, the, the vein to go on the shaft helical. So I'm gonna slide this in, and I'm gonna turn these to make sure that they made up with the shaft. Now, always make sure that you look closely. And I'll get, pick up the jig and slide this in until it touches. And I'll look at it very closely and make some light adjustments to these discs. And I can look at it underneath like so. I can look at the back, I can look at the underside here, and make sure that the entire base of the vein is connected. If the disc is out of joint, one side of the vein will lift up off the shaft, so just make sure that both sides of the vein are in full contact before you put glue on it, okay? So I've got that checked and it's set, so they've supplied a little Allen wrench here, and once I have this checked and set to just make sure that this is right where I want it to be, and let's see, in that one, I need to make a tiny adjustment to this one, and I'm watching it come in contact, and I see that right here, if I look really close, I see that that one is lifted just a little, so I'm gonna just give that just a little turn, 
and I'm gonna slide that and I see that it comes in full contact and the vein doesn't move or anything while I'm touching it down. So that's good. So with the clamp dry fitted to the shaft to make sure that these don't move, I'll just take my little Allen wrench here and just snug these little screws up and that will lock these discs down so you can't accidentally bump it in between each vein. So I'll just snug that down. You don't want to over tighten it. You don't have to get crazy with it. You just snug it down. And then that way these can't accidentally be moved and it mess up your fletching job. So there we go. We are ready for glue. Now let me tell you a little thing about the projection. Like how far forward or backwards do you put the vein on the shaft? So one thing that you should pay attention to is how you anchor with your bow. So if you have the veins all the way back against the knock like this, and you draw your arrow back here, you see the vein will touch my face. So with the vein touching my face, it'll cause tuning issues, right tear through the paper for a right-handed shooter, or it'll cause horizontal groups at distance. So I want to make sure that these veins are far enough up the shaft so that when I draw the arrow back that there's enough room in between my chin and the vein so that way nothing touches my face in this area and messes up the tune of my bow. So once I figure out, let's say this is, I see this distance here is what I need, then I can set up the dry fit, you see there, I can just loosen up this knob and then I can slide this back and say, okay, I want that to be right about there. So I see I have my jig on number one. So I'll tighten that up on number one. So I'll put the arrow shaft back in. And then when I slide this down, you see I have the amount of projection on the veins that I want so that I can get clearance with my face. And on an arrow, at the slow speeds and the short distances that arrows fly, the positioning between an inch away from the knock or a half inch away from the knock is not enough to make any difference at all for archery. If this was a rocket going 2,000 miles, it might make a difference, but this is just an arrow, it's short distances, so just set it up for clearance. So as an add-on piece, if you like four fletch, Last Chance Archery has 75-105 or 90-degree four-fletch. Now, there's another feature to this. Let me show this to you uh, on the three-fletch model and the four-fletch model. There's a whole array of different graduations inside of here. They have cock feather out, which would normally be for recurve, and then they have cock feather up, which would normally be for a compound. So you can set the, the orientation of your cock feather to the knocking point by changing the rotation of the detents here. And you see that little nipple that sticks out right there. And this goes on here. So if I want to set it for compound, and I can set this for one, two, or three left, and then I'll slide that back into place and make sure that it fully engages. And then I just tighten the screw back down and I'm all set and I'm ready to fletch. And I can record the number that I used. So once I fletch a dozen arrows for a particular bow and it clears and I have the orientation of the cock feather where I want it to be, I can write all these numbers down. I know that I have one projection. I know that I have three left, and I know that I have two left on my cock feather orientation. So I write all those numbers down, and then when I go back to make another set months later, I can make a set of identical twins to the first dozen that I made before. No other jig will let you do that. Now, a little word about your wires. There is a glue resistant cover on these wires. It's clear and uh, that little, it's kind of like just a heat shrink that goes over the top. So glue won't stick to that really well, but if you leave glue on this, it'll stick. So, uh, and then the glue will build up and it'll kind of ruin the covers on your wires. So in order to stop that, you can just use a microfiber cloth and just give it a wipe up and down in between veins and that'll clean the glue off the wires so that way you don't have any buildup and you don't have to change your covers quite so much. If you do end up 
and you need a change of covers, you can order the covers from lastchancearchery.com and they'll send you new covers. You can slide them on the wires and then shrink them down and have brand new covers uh, to carry on without any glue buildup. So microfiber cloth keeps the glue buildup away.